Hello everybody, this is Carrie with Unicorn Company, and um, today we are going to have a quick little look at how political is Battletech, because here's the thing, I've had quite a few people tell me that I need to keep my politics out of Battletech, and I'm going to try to make it woke and all this other stuff, and you know what, here's the thing, Battletech's always been political, um, without going all the way back in, into the Star League Defense Force books and everything like that, we can start off pretty simply with uh, New Cape Town. Um, New Cape Town is a planet in the Lyran Commonwealth that was settled by South Africans of white descent who decided to make a whole planet based on um, a class system or a caste system that used race. So there's that. And based on the color of your skin, the better you, better life you had. Um, the other one would be a more recent entry. It's a few years old. It would be the Free Thai St. Ives. And you notice I stopped in the middle there, and that's because Battletech did the same thing. Um, as one of their quote-unquote April Fool's books, they released a book called Free, and it started to say Taiwan, and it said St. Ives. Um, now, this book is not canon, so the events that take place in it are not canon to the you know to the story but it does um you know it, it kind of shines a light on taiwan and the fact that they have china sitting there waiting to just leap in and scoop them up at a moment's notice so and i mean even if when you look in the book like the the bad guy are the Crimson Revolution, which use the Chinese, you know, like the red, a red shield with a, ha a gold hammer and sickle on it. Um, it. It's very clear about its politics. And then, of course, if you look at the map, it's not up one to one, but it's pretty close to Taiwan. Like, pretty, pretty close. So, I mean, that being said, you have you know, you have um, New Cape Town, which is a huge bit of, hey, here, here's a racist planet, and you have um, the Free St. Ives thing. I mean, going into other things, they're, they're, I forget which camera it is, but one of them was pretty, uh, pretty gay. Um, there was, oh god. Oh, there was, there's the fact that samurai in the Draconis Combine can be of any race. That It's not just Japanese people. Um, there's a whole matriarchal society in the, uh, ma in the Torrent, no, Magistry of Canopus. Canopus. Um, you know, it, it's, there's, there's women who are good, strong characters and who are bad, strong characters. Um. And they don't always have to be hypersexualized. Um, I want to say Alice. Oh God, there have been a couple of um, recent ones who were Merricks. You know, it, it's just BattleTech is not political until it is. And quite frankly, for people out there like Razor Fist and Mage Leader who are saying, "Oh, BattleTech's not political. Don't bring your politics into it." It's always been political. Um, you could look at a lot of what happened between House Davian and House Merrick with the whole, you know, the whole replacement clone thing as a look at the way that certain governments have a tendency to try to um, cover things up. Or you have the whole nation building thing that happened with um, St. Ives itself, technically, where the Fed Sons propped up St. Ives, much like a large country props up a smaller one because it gives them political clout or political gain. So, yeah. Um, is Battletech political? Kind of. Um, it, it already has it in there. Would it be out of hand to expect to possibly eventually see a trans Battletech character or some LGBTQ characters who, you know 
are, are shown in a positive light no that, that's not outside of expectations at all that that seems normal to me that you would want to have that kind of a representation in your universe to attract those players who are on the rise and like i said i'm not talking about we're not talking about making battletech quote unquote woke as a lot of people like to put it we're talking about just upholding tradition at this point because that's what Battletech is. Battletech is a diverse, multicultural universe. I mean, for, for Christ's sakes, one of the major languages in the universe is a mix of Japanese and Swedish. I mean, where else are you going to run into that? But yeah, so I mean, that's my little mini rant for the day, little mini episode. I'm glad that it was not while I'm inebriated on anything. Um... I do want to go ahead and let you know that obviously Tamar Rising was released. Uh, oh God, that was yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Anyway, Tamar Rising has been released. So on the actual full next episode, which will be next Saturday, uh, it'll release Friday at 11:59, just like this one does. Um, next Saturday, we will have a full review of Tamar Rising. So if you want to avoid spoilers don't check it out until you've had a chance to read the book um otherwise i do want to go ahead and before i sign off i want to thank my patrons um you all help to keep this you know help this make this possible if you do want to go ahead and help support the podcast feel free to go on over to patreon.com slash unicorn company which is one word uh, we have a few different tiers. A couple of them do get you miniatures uh, from Mift Kitty Minis, which I have a relationship with and I need to go into on its own one day. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day, great evening, great whatever it is where you are. And this is Carrie signing off. <laughs>